Hi, my name is Donna and this is Kingsley. He's a king parrot and I am a bird lover, bird geek, bird nerd, bird crazy and just passionate about birds. Everyone calls me the crazy bird lady. I enjoy watching the wild birds outside as well as sharing my home with my pet birds. Everywhere I go, I look for birds. Look at all the seagulls. Look at these Canada geese. I can spot them like miles away. I see a bird on that pole way over there. It's probably a seagull or something. I tell my husband to stop the car or turn around so I can go see the birds. Wow, look at all the pigeons. Or we just watch them while driving in the car. I go birding and hope to spot unusual birds that I don't see in my own backyard. And I love it. I've seen several. I feed wild birds in my backyard and recently added a heated bird bath and the birds love it. And I have seen them bathing on nice winter days. How crazy is that? I enjoy visiting zoos, aviaries and rescues to see all the birds. I stop at all pet stores to see the pet birds and to make sure they are being cared for. And if I see any deplorable conditions, I make sure to speak up and advocate for the birds and other pets as well. My favorite place is the Bird Kingdom in Niagara Falls, Canada. It's a large walk in Avery with a variety of species of birds. I love it there so much. I, I, I want to stay there. I want to sleep over, but they won't let me. I have donated birds to go live in that Avery that didn't thrive in my home to give them a better life. I donated a elegant parakeet, some canaries, a Java sparrows, and a Rosella parrot. And they're all doing awesome. I'll put the links in the description down below of that Avery and my donated birds. You can go check it out later after this video. Since I love birds so much and wanted to share my life with birds, I decided to make one of my spare rooms into a bird room with my very own flock of pet birds. In the bird room, there are six budgies, Jack Sparrow, Fruit Fly, Splash, Sterling, thunder and lightning. Four cockatiels, Monty, Willow, Jingles and Bubbles. It's five rosy Burke parakeets, rosy, raspberry, raindrop, rascal and Tinkerbell. Two turquoisine parakeets, Beauty and Starfire. Two Java sparrows, Nightshade and Misty. Two canaries, Sherbert and Starburst. One Kakariki Summer, one Lovebird Sprinkles, one Linolated Parakeet Pickles, and one Sierra Parakeet Glitter. Splash, Sterling, Bubbles, Rascal, and Raindrop were hatched in my bird room. Bubbles is Monty and Willow's baby. Rascal and Raindrop are Rosie's babies. Splash and Sterling's parents are no longer alive. Jack Sparrow, Fruit Fly, Thunder and Lightning were found outside. I found Jack Sparrow and Fruit Fly in my own backyard. Budgies are not native to my area and are considered escaped or lost pet birds and needed to be rescued. I lured them into my bird room as they have a slim chance of survival living outdoors in Canada. Thunder and lightning were caught by another bird lover not far from me and I agreed to foster them until the owners were found. The owners never came forward so now they live with me. I have videos on how I caught them and will leave the links to their videos in the description to this video down below so you can check that out afterwards as well. Monty, Misty, Starburst and Glitter were rehomed to me. The others were acquired from breeders and one from a pet store. My husband brought me or bought me a Sherbert the Canary from a pet store as a gift for Christmas several years ago. 
he knew I wanted a canary, so he got me one. I actually picked him out, so my husband just paid for him. <laughs> so it wasn't like a, just a surprise. I really wanted one. That's a total of 25 birds in the bird room. I also have four larger birds in my living room, including Kingsley, the King Parrot, Malibu, the Superb Parrot, the Synergy, the Plum-Headed Parakeet, and Electra, the Senegal Parrot. That's a total of 29 birds. Wow, it seems like a lot of birds. However, I see it as two birds, like the birds in the bird room and the birds in the living room. I usually don't count them. I see them as one flock. The larger birds are separated from the smaller birds for safety reasons. The larger birds also spend time in the bird room when the smaller birds are safely in their cages to get the exercise and enrichment that they need. The oldest bird is Monty the cockatiel. He will be 19 in a few weeks. The youngest bird is Tinkerbell the rosy bird. She is only six months old. And the boss of the bird room is Monty with second runner up is Glitter. All the birds listen to their rules. They're really bossy. The shyest are Beauty and Starfire, the turquoisine parakeets. The birds that eat and bathe the most is Summer, the Kakariki. The loudest is my Linny Pickles, who makes constant contact calls. The quietest is Willow, my female cockatiel. I've hardly, I've, I don't think I've even heard a noise from her ever. She's like silent. And the best singers are the canaries. The best talker is Bubbles the cockatiel. In the bird room that is, because my other birds in the living room do talk as well. But the best talker in the bird room is Bubbles. The birds that are the friendliest and want to spend time with me in the bird room are Bubbles, Sprinkles, Glitter, Raspberry, Tinkerbell, and Nightshade. The others would rather be with the other birds and just be birds. My larger birds that love spending time with me are Kingsley, Malibu, and Synergy. Electra prefers men and doesn't want to spend much time with me, although she does like it when I offer her treats, then I'm her best friend. And now I will take you on a tour of the bird room. Before you enter the bird room, there is a cabinet here that displays my bird's trophies from winning at bird shows. I'm very proud of them. There's another one over here. And there's some up here on the wall. And I have my play button that I got when I passed 100,000 subscribers. Now let's enter the bird room. I do have a curtain here. I used to have a bamboo curtain, but it got all ruined. So I just now have a curtain. It has leaves on it that makes it look like bamboo and just more tropical. I like the look and you know, it makes the bird room look nicer. Now all of my birds are in the cages right now. I put them in there so I can show you my bird room without them flying all over the place and jumping on me and landing on my camera and all that. So let's go into the room. I do have a door here as well that I can shut if I need to because some of the birds tried to get out of here and it's okay. So this is my bird room. And I'll show you the rest soon. There's the doorway. And here's all your cages. So I do have a big uh, sliding glass door here that's six feet long. This door opens up pretty wide so that I can slide out my cages in the warmer uh, season and I just roll them out. All my cages are on wheels. I can just roll them out and in the warmer season, there's an aviary that we put up right here. You can see that on my other videos. And I uh, alternate birds that go in there. 
and um, they have a great time. They can be in the Avery or they can sit on the deck and get their sun. And this window allows a lot of light to come in here and my birds can look outside. And because uh, I do actually feed the wild birds as well and they see all those birds and I love watching them too. So I got birds everywhere. There are 16 cages in here. There are three flight cages. These are HQ flight cages. They're uh, 32 inches wide by 21 inches deep. And in this flight cage, there are six budgies. In this cage, there's two cockatiels. In that cage, there's two uh, burke parakeets. And then I have these stackable, what are called breeding cages. They're called breeding cages because there's a door on the side to put a nest box, but I don't use it for that. I use it for my pets. And this is on a stand. There's three of them. There is room for one more, but it's too low. I would never put birds down there. I use that for storage to put the blankets that I um, cover their cages at night with. So in this cage here, there's two turquoise and parakeets. Here there's two rosy birds, and here there's one canary. Now on the other wall here, there's the four cages here. These two are preview, yeah, preview cages. They are 25 wide, I believe, by about, I think they're 20 deep. And they house one bird each. And these are the same as the other ones that are on the stand. These are made by preview as well. They call them stackable breeding cages. They are actually uh, 24 by 18 deep and then 18 high. There's one bird in each of these. There's the Sierra parakeets in there. My Linny is in there. Summer, the Kikariki's in there. And Monty, the cockatiel. This is the other side of the room, um, opposite the flight cages. So I got the four cages as well here. There's one bird in each. These are the same as the other side, the preview cages that are 25 by 20 deep, I believe. And then the stackable breeding cages that are 24 by 18 by 18. So there's a Java Finch in there, there's Nightshade, Java Finch there, there's Misty. My love bird is Sprinkles and another cockatiel, Bubbles. And then against the window here, I don't always leave it here just to let you know. I do move it, especially at night because it could get cold from the window. Um, this is another stackable breeding cage, the 24 inch by 18. There's another canary in there, that's um, a Sherbert. And then I have my newest Rosie Berg parakeet, that's Tinkerbell. And this is, it's hard to see because the window's open, but this is a preview cage as well. I think they might call this one a flight cage. I believe it is 32 long. I could be wrong, I gotta measure it again, but it's, it's pretty long and thin wise, I think it's only 16 or 18. I'd have to measure it to be sure. But anyways, it fits the Rosie Burke parakeet and my birds are out most of the time. So they don't stay in these cages. So don't be alarmed if you think they're too small. They have the whole room here. So this room is 12, just over 12 feet by nine and a half feet. So basically this whole room is their cage. The cages are just for the nighttime and in the morning and for emergencies like inclement weather um, or I need them to be in a cage or my larger birds are out here. So they get like many, many hours a day out of these cages. On top of all my cages, all cages, I put this plastic on top. These plastics are basically um, for uh, rugs like to protect your rugs and these ones are flat there's there's other ones that have the little like nibs on it to stick into your carpet but these ones are flat more to protect like the floor and uh, they're a see-through and what I do is I have two sides this one's like for grip and that one's smooth so I put the smooth side on because it's easier to wipe off so basically what I do uh, what I put these on for is to keep them clean because all my birds sit up here and they poop down below. So this will prevent all the poop from going in the cages or the food or toys or anything like that. And it also gives the birds a flat surface instead of them like climbing if they're here. And you know, the, the bars are here. So birds are always walking on the bars. It's like, you know, you don't want to use your grates in the cage. The birds can get their little feet in here. I got a lot of small birds. So it's for a safety reason as well. And I put my bird bath here and they splash and make a mess. So I really don't want all that water down below in the cage, you know, wrecking everything and making it wet. So all my cages have this plastic 
And I highly recommend and you do that if you have a lot of birds and birds that are out. And um, if you do decide to use plastics, make sure you wash it first and air it out either outside or in another room because plastic gives off a really bad smell that can be toxic and you really wouldn't want that for your birds. Even the smaller cages have this. I put, I cut a hole for the middle. You see where the handle goes? I cut a hole in the plastic and just put that there and hold it down. And um, this works um, great and it keeps the cages down below uh, cleaner. So let's start with what's on my ceiling. My birds have a great time up here. So I do have two cargo nets. There's one there. Oh no, I have more than that. There's another one there. There's another one there. So I have three of them. And the birds, they spend a lot of time up there. It gives them a lot of activity. And they have a great time climbing around there. So I got the three cargo nets. And then I have these uh, perches. These are called Wacky Wood. This, these perches you can find in the reptile department. They're meant for reptiles. I just put two eye hooks on the, the end of them and use the the plastic chain to tie them up to the ceiling and it gives them a lot of exercise for their feet because they are curvy and different shapes on top. So I have, let me just look, no I have two of them. So this one's the, the longest one. This one's in the middle of the, the, the room, like the middle of the wall. And then I have this shorter one. This one's a little bit shorter. And I have four boings. The birds have a great time in this. They climb from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. They have an excellent time. So there's uh, a boing there, a boing here. These are two big ones. These are, I believe, are the largest ones. There might be a larger one than this, I'm not sure. And then I have uh, two of them back here. So they're hanging off that wacky wood. There's a smaller one there and a smaller one over there. And on the other side of the room, I have two more one on each end of the rope perch. So I do have a couple of rope perches. This is one of them. And again, the birds love that. It's like a swing, it's like a big swing. They land on it and they swing back and forth or sometimes it just stays steadily. It depends on the birds. Some birds like to swing and they make themselves swing. And here is the other rope perch. It's a little bit smaller and it has these like little toys on it, little plastic toys that they play with sometimes and, and, and chew at or just kind of, you know, bang around. And then I have these like swings. They're circular that the birds love to um, sit in there and they can swing as well. All of these on the ceiling can move back and forth. So I do have one that's a circle and here's just a regular like triangle. It's like wooden on the bottom. And then I have this one back here. It's a little bit different shape with different uh, perches on it. It's just hanging up there with a the rope that my birds are frequently go on to. And then I have this sphere. It's just a round like sphere. And the budgies love this, especially when they're in there, it does swing back and forth. And especially when there's a few budgies on it, it's pretty fun for the birds. And this multiple branch perch is recently new to my bird room. I just hung it up um, just a while ago and it took the birds actually a while to use it. They were kind of afraid of it at first, but now they love it. They all jump on it, especially my larger birds. They, they're on this um, perch and uh, yeah, they're having a great time with it. On top of the flight cages, there are tabletop uh, play stands for the birds to play on and that way they have more you know, areas that they can decide where they want to sit and play and land on. So there's three of them here. This one's just a small one. And what I've done is I attach toys. There's the eye rings here. You can see the eye ring up here. And it's just for attaching toys. So there's several toys here. And there's toys over here as well where all the eye hooks are. And there's also toys that are up here. It's hard to see, sorry. And there's some up there. And there's some through these boings. There's one over here and one over here. They're the same toys, but they can go over there and chew those whenever they want to. And there's also a java tree in the middle. This is a tabletop java tree. It's kind of big though, but it does sit on top of my air cleaner. So I do have an air cleaner, which I recommend you have, even if you have one bird or especially cockatiels, African greys, all the dusty birds. 
or a lot of birds like me, you need an air cleaner to keep the air clean and to keep all the dust out of your lungs and out of all the other birds' lungs. It works um, great. It's not on right now because it'll be noisy and you won't hear me. And there's Jingles singing to Willow. So my birds love this Java tree. <laughs> sometimes you'll see a lot of them on here. Sometimes just one or two or three. And sometimes all the same species, like all the cockatiels will land up here or all the burks will land up here or the budgies or or a mixture of the species, it depends. So there is a bowl here um, that I gotta fill up that I put some pellets in here they can eat when they're out. And also, they got toys here that they've been working on. You can see how they're all chewed up. So there are high hooks here that hold some toys. And there's another one over here. And they just grab it and, and chew it away. So there's paper down below to keep it clean because I sit on it and, and poop on it. So I put paper there. And um, yeah, it makes a great uh, area for them to land on and play on. And when they sit on it, they can actually look outside. All the swings, boings, nets, perches are all hung up with ceiling hooks and plastic chains, D-rings and pair links and eye hooks where needed. I put this eye hook in the, the back or the, the end of the wacky wood because it didn't come with it at the time and so we installed that and just use the plastic chains. Uh, these chains, you can cut them to size. They come in different colors, um, different uh, like link size. So I just got different colors to make the room look you know, more colorful. I like the blue because it goes with my color, color theme of all the blue walls. The ceiling is blue because I wanted it to look like the sky. Originally it was white and I thought white isn't good enough. When I painted it blue, I loved it so much. It looks like the sky. And one day I would love to paint some clouds up there, but this way I'll make it like a sunny blue sky day. And so all the walls are blue all the way around. Except for this wall. In this wall, there's a mural and there's a parrot. This is a, a jungle themed um, mural and there's a parrot up there and I believe there's, uh, oh, there's a, like a moth or a butterfly. There's flowers and there was a monkey somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's probably behind the cages, but it has all these beautiful um, plants on there. It looks so nice. I want it to, to look like the jungle, you know, for the birds. And it has this beautiful flower that's so pretty. The vine going all the way up to the parrot there on the top. It looks good. I love it very much, but sadly, one of my birds chewed a hole in my mural. But look at this, he made it look like a chickadee or something, or like a duck. But the, it looks like, you know, the head here, there's like a little tiny beak and the body and the tail. <laughs> but the beak is really small, so I thought maybe more like a chickadee than a duck. Oh yeah, so here's the monkey. The monkey's uh, little face there. So the monkey's looking at uh, the artwork here. So Synergy, my plum-headed parakeet, did this. He was in here one day and I had a stepladder leaning on the wall. He jumped on the stepladder and chewed that whole thing. He chewed it all and, and chewed my light switch as well. Oh my canary's singing good, eh? And somebody, I don't know who that is, but they're chewing that too. So they kind of ruined it, but anyway, it still looks pretty good. And one day I will get a new mural or just get some wallpaper or just leave it blue. So I wouldn't want them to um, chew it again because it's pretty expensive. But look how nice this looks. Just pretend that's a bird over there and uh, like a chickadee. <laughs> it blends in with the merle. And on the wall where the flight cages are, I applied some wall decals to look like vines coming down. I really like the look. It looks nice and jungly because I like the jungle look. There's vines, flowers, and little birds. You can see the birds all the way here and then all the way over here to the end of this wall where the closet is. Yeah, so there's one of the birds that are on the wall. It kind of looks like a sparrow. And here's another bird. Don't know what kind of bird this is, but anyway, it's really pretty. And there is a painted palm tree on the wall next to the sliding door and next to the flight cages. My niece painted this for me. So it's not a decal. This is actually painted on. 
and I really love it. It's, it's a beautiful, nice palm tree, and it almost looks real, doesn't it? Isn't it pretty? On the wall between my closet and my doorway to lead into the rest of my house, I got this ornament one year for Christmas, and it's two birds, and it says home tweet home, and I was able to have them print whatever I wanted on the bottom here, on the perch, and look what I asked them to do. It says, love of pets. So home, tweet home, two birds, and love of pets. I thought it was perfect for the bird room, and I love it so much, so that's always gonna be there. I have this storage uh, container on this side of the room. I just store my birds' like supplies in here. Lots of toys, these are Christmas toys, extra toys, toys I see on sale or I just buy a lot so I have them. And I put them in bags to keep them clean because you never know if you have an outbreak of something. That way you don't have to throw away all the toys, you just wash the bag. So this is a perfect idea. So they just my bird toys and bowls. Just so I keep all my birds like birthdays and their band numbers all on these papers. I gotta rewrite them because they're kind of like out of order. And just all the papers. There's some kind of bone in here. Just things that I will need for my birds. And down below, each cage has a storage area. I store their blankets where I cover them. These are just garbage bags for the garbage. This is a newspaper stored in there. Those are my rolls of paper. I use this more for the newspaper. I just use it for this stand that's in the middle of the room. And I use the white um, newsprint, the clear white newsprint for all my cages. It looks much better and it doesn't have that newspaper smell. And so I have two rolls, one larger, one smaller that I keep under the middle cage. And then that's spray millet in that big box along with the blanket and um, there's their bird bath that goes up above the cages when they take a bath. That's more or less for storage for whatever I have for the birds. There, um, there's more blankets under there. This is seed. I do feed my birds some seed as well. That's cockatiel seed over there. That's just a stool. Let's go around here. That is the garbage can. Sorry, I left a rag up there. It's a summer. Hi, Summer. And, uh, you know, a blanket again and more seed. That's the canary seed. There's some bird bass under there, and this is the budgie seed. And then I have canary egg food, or egg food for anybody when they're molting. This is for the squirrels, his peanuts, I don't feed them to my birds. And there's some oat sprays, and that is just to put on top of my curtains so they won't land on it, but it doesn't work lately, they still land on it. It doesn't hurt them, it's just like to keep critters off of things. And um, so anyways, that's what I use for below the cages is just a storage for bird items. The floor is ceramic tile and what I've done is I put a plastic chair mats all the way around, all the way around under all my birds cages. There's, uh, I think there's one, two, three, yeah, there's five of these chair mats. These are chair mats that go under, like say, an office chair, you don't want to ruin the floor. So I put this for extra protection and easy wipe up and to protect the grout lines there because you can see the difference with these grout lines compared to the, the grout lines that aren't uh, being covered by the plastic. But uh, that's another way you can protect your floors by getting these plastic chair mats and just put them right below, right under all your cages. And it works fantastic. They're pretty large as well. It's nice. And this carpet is just to protect the floor from uh, being wet. There's snow outside right now and the dogs come in, you know, off of my feet, the dogs feed. So I just put it there to collect the water and it looks pretty nice as well. And on the windows, I put these decals of birds so that my birds and the wild birds will see that there is glass there. I have them all the way down. And then on this uh, window here, I got these little squares. I have a video of this. And I have them on both sides of the glass so the wild birds will see them better. They're, they more or less are, um, or what do you call it, the kind of glow where the birds will see it. And so my birds will see this as well and they'll see this so they don't hit the window. And I haven't had any problems with my birds trying to go through the window as I know where the window is. And they can see all these decals. I have two curtains on my window. This one's a sheer curtain. It has leaves on it, it's really pretty. 
Uh, usually I will uh, close this sometimes as the light can still come through for my birds to have light during the day. This just protects my birds from seeing any hawks or cats outside or birds hitting the window as well. There's two curtains here that are sheer and this one gets closed at night time. This is a dark darkening curtain. It's for um, to darken out the room so that my birds will sleep and yeah they won't chirp in the night or early morning so we can sleep as my bedroom's right beside this room so I do need it quiet in the mornings until I wake them up and it also helps the cold like stay out of the room and the heat as well if it's really hot or cold I will close it as it's a thick curtain and it really prevents the cold from coming in or the heat from coming in as well and it's blue in color goes all the way to the floor. I have this wall heater here for my bird parakeets because they're right against the wall. It gets cold in the winter. So I put that there and it just emits a little bit of heat. You can see he's sitting right beside it. It puts a little bit of heat in just a small area. And so if they want to get warm, they can just go to that section. If not, they can go to the other side. And my Vinny Pickles has her own heater in her cage. And she's 14, going to be 15, and she's an older girl. I find her getting cold at times. But she's right here, she's, she's 14 right now. And um, yeah, I notice her, she's a little bit chilled up at night sometimes. So she has her own heater. There's this light in the middle of the room. There's three bulbs, they're daylight bulbs and they face each side of the room, which is fantastic. I also have a dimmer in the room, so I can dim this. I have to dim it with my hand, um, just at nighttime when they're going to bed, or, or if I just don't want it so bright in here. Like when they get sleepy at night, I just turn it down. I'm turning it down now. It's, the curtains are open and still light in here, but you can tell it's getting darker in here, and right down, and then this is off. So I'll turn it back on and there we go. That's the brightest. So the brightest is, I don't want to burn your eyes, but that's the brightest. And then as I lower it, it gets a nice, like a dimmer color. I usually dim it in the evenings and then eventually just put it really low until I'm going to cover them up and let them go to sleep. Because I don't like to just turn the light off for like suddenly. It kind of hurts, hurts their eyes and you know, bothers them. So the dimming is fantastic. So there, I just dim the lights, but the curtains are still open, so they still have light. But I'll turn it back on. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the video on the screen and I will see you in the next video.